Microsoft SQL Server is a popular database for data warehousing to consolidate data and do advanced analytics. For this demo, Salesforce account data needs to be sent to SQL Server for analytics. First, you will see how you can automate setting up a data pipeline into SQL Server. Then, once the pipeline is set up, you will see how the pipeline adapts to changing schemas in Salesforce. Let's start by looking at the Salesforce accounts. The account records have tons of fields we need to sync. This building address field is particularly hard to sync because it contains nested data. You will see how you can flatten the data for loading. Now let's look at the destination, SQL Server. Right now, you can see there are no tables or data in this database called replication. To automatically replicate the account object schema into SQL Server and create a table, let's use a Wakata recipe. This is a recipe that batches new and updated accounts in Salesforce and sends the batch to SQL Server into a table called Accounts SF, which doesn't exist yet. To use the replicate feature, you must use the optional field Detect New or Updated Custom Data in the trigger. The Replicate Batch of Rows action is where you enter the SQL Server details. The table name is Accounts SF, and we are entering account data from Salesforce. The Flatten Columns option is how you take nested data like the billing address shown earlier, and turn the data into individual columns. And you must also enter which field contains the unique identifier or keys for each record you're importing to identify duplicates. Now let's start this recipe. Now that the job is done processing, let's check this out in SQL Server itself. Refreshing the database shows that there's now a new table. And you can see that all of the fields from the account object in Salesforce have been automatically replicated in SQL Server. Scrolling through the data, you can see how the billing address was flattened with the nested data separated into individual columns for street, city, state, and zip code. Now that the data pipeline has been set up, let's see what happens when the schema changes in Salesforce. Back in Salesforce, I will go ahead and add a new field to the account object. Let's create a new pick list field. And call it account subtype. I enter the values for this field and then walk through the final field creation steps. Back on the account, there is now a new account subtype field. Let's choose the textiles option and save. Back in Workato, the recipe is set to pull Salesforce every five minutes, but let's force the trigger to check Salesforce now. Great, one new job has been found. Once the job is finished processing, the new field should have been added to the SQL Server table. One way to check is in the job details. By clicking on the replicate action, you can see the data that was input as well as the output steps, including a verification that the table was altered. Let's check this out in SQL Server itself. After refreshing the database and scrolling down, you can see that the account subtype field has indeed been automatically detected and added to the table. Want to learn more about Orcado? Then request a demo today.